Good morning. Uh, I'm Takashi Matsumoto from uh, Shonan Kamakura General Hospital. This is a session, live case session, TCTAP 2022. Uh, uh, structure heard okay. is live case session three, mitral grip. Okay. I will chair this session with uh, Dr. James E from St. Paul's Hospital. And also we have uh, Dr. Paul Tung Lim Chiam from uh, Mount Elizabeth Hospital, Singapore and Dr. Du Yong Kang from uh, Assam Medical Center and Dr. KK Yeo from uh, National Heart Center, Singapore. Today's operator is uh, Dr. Sai Barka. He is my boss and uh, he will show a very interesting, uh, I, th I hope he will show a very interesting mitral grip case. Saibo, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you guys very well. And I can also I also hear the uh, the moderators and the other panelists' names too. Hi, KK. Hi, Robert. Morning. Good morning. Morning. So, could you introduce your heart team? Sure. I uh, first of all, from Las Robles Regional Medical Center, thank you for allowing us to participate in this case. We are here in the evening. It's a bit late. Most people are drunk by now, but I managed to get them off drinks. They're peaceful. <laughs> On my right is Asma Husseini and Takashi, you remember her? She was my PA. And Andrew Gabriel, can you say why? Andrew Gabriel is the cardiac anesthesiologist Hello. who's outstanding. And you remember Muri, he's like him. They're actually from the same country too. <laughs> and they, he's both an anesthesiologist and echocardiographer is outstanding. Thank you. Dr. Jake Kim, he's actually uh, one of the interns. He wants to scrub in because he's Korean. He wants to, he wants to be the interpreter today in the case. <laughs> On my right is uh, Ali from Abbott, Pierce from Abbott, and Stephanie. And then over here is Mike Lemon. He's one of the techs. He doesn't believe in vaccinations. He's a COVID spreader. Greg Edwards and uh, Gabriel Oreta, who's actually the lead tech. Tom, hi, Tom is lead tech. And then in Singh. Now, we have two um, imaging systems, which I'm going to show you. The first imaging system, which we're using directly for you guys, is VAS read by three people over here. Chris Woolley is the leader of this group. But we also have another system called Alta, which we on the sideline can record any case at any time. But we just keep it on the side. So with that, I'm going to introduce the case. Can I start the case? So this is the team which I just mentioned. Next slide. Uh, next slide. So this is a 77 year old female who's a movie producer and was a referred to me by my sister. So you have to listen to my sister. History of mitral valve prolapse for 30 years. Her mother and sister had mitral valve disease. Mother died prior to surgery. Sister had surgery. She's been short of breath and with fatigue for eight months. She's kind of a little frail. And the biggest, biggest concern is that she's a sole care provider of her husband who's with a malignancy. And for her, surgical recovery was quite difficult. And so my sister insisted on a transcatheter approach rather than surgical repair. So anyway, this is just a baseline transthoracic images, which were done by her, which show that the LV is slightly dilated. The left atrium is clearly dilated. The right ventricle is okay. The right atrium is all right. And there's a clear cut prolapse of the posterior leaflet with evidence of mitral annular calcification with an eccentric medial looking jet. Next slide. Uh, this is just the 3D. I'm not going to go details in the T because Gabriel is going to show it. And you can see here, this is a, an, a valve, which is not very large in the, and a clear cut prolapse in the middle, a two knob, two prolapse in the middle and the jet is right coming from the middle. And then the next view shows, uh, next slide, shows the Bicom LBOT view. So with that, I'm just going to ask, uh, go live. And uh, sh Gobril wants to show a couple of images before we start. Sure. Yeah. So just and like if you have any questions, you can start now. Yeah. Just like Dr. Carr showed in his pre-op echo, this is what we we're seeing the same thing today, which is nice. Um, this does not show it here. This is kind of the lateral segment. And then as you move more towards the middle of the valve, you start to see the severe regurgitation that she has and the, and the color compare there. You can see the prolapsing uh, posterior leaflet. There, and then this becomes the more medial segment. And then on the um, BICOM right here, you can see the width of the jet, a very, very wide jet, and almost looks like there's two distinct jets, kind of, if you can imagine, in between that, uh, those two uh, little uh, thickened areas of the, of the mitral valve. So 
there's one jet and then there's one lateral. So I think our plan is to kind of go for the, the, the biggest of the two and then see what we're left with after that. Um, and I can show you the, the 3D image that we got today as well. So any questions from the, uh, from the panel? Cyber, uh, there are two jet, right? Uh, very big jet from uh, P2 yeah. corrupt and then one yes. small jet from lateral side. It's lateral side is a functional MR or other prolapse. It's kind of, it looks like it's prolapsing as well. Yeah, it's, yeah. I think it's all degenerative. Yes. But you know, what is concerning is the leaflets are a bit thickened and the orifice is not that great. If you look at it, mm -hmm. It's not that big, and we measured the valve area uh, to be only 4.6. I mean, mm -hmm. stretching it. Sometimes it looks even less than four. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that is our concern in this yeah. case. Yeah. So but, on this 3D image, you see the color jet here, and then you can use a, a feature called face crop and crop kind of down below the valve and see where the or origination of the jets uh, actually occurs. And so here's the the bigger of the two. And so I think that's why we should try to place our instrument clip right in the middle of that area, right? Mm -hmm. Agreed, yeah. And uh, this is the one valve ready. He got us 2.79, another one he got 4.56. Yeah. And this is using the multi-view technology, uh, which comes from our 3D shot, so, which we'll use to, during the case. So we did a right femoral venous access. Uh, we did a per close and we, the only thing I did is I did do a transeptal. So can I just show where I did it? Because I just like to show you that so I just use a standard bike, standard needle and a BRK. And if you can see if we did it uh, in the bicable fossa, it's in the mid fossa and it's posterior and our height is about 4.5 to 5. That's right. So we got 4.4. Is that any, any questions? And then I can continue from now. Is there any question from a panelist or moderator? And this is a live shot right here. So, Cyber, do you use a one park road or a two park roads? Just one, one? park road. Let's see. We can't and afford two. And you, you said, <laughs> and you said well, four point six is small, but it's it's for usual for us Asian people. But you know, Japanese people are slightly sure, smaller in size. Their body mm. body surface area is yes. smaller, right? Yes. So for that, she's a very tall lady. So this is going to I be see. a concern. So I'm going to go ahead while you guys are talking. I've got one transeptal sheath in the pulmonary vein, as you can see, and I'm putting one soft wire into the left pulmonary vein, and then I'm going to second wire with a stiff wire. So the first wire is the soft wire, and you and you can keep talking to me. So Sam, you did you measure this. airway pressure? All always through the entire case, and you can see the pressures are. Can you show the pressures, Chris? Big. So we have the left atrial pressure on, and you can see the prominent V wave. Yes. If the mean is 17 with a V wave of 34. So you, do you see that pressure tracing? That's great. Yes. And we will measure left atrial pressure throughout the case um, with the double. So this is what I'm going to do. As you can see, I'm putting two wires down the same transeptal sheet. Now, a lot of people don't do what I'm doing. Right, I think this is a good technique where you put two wires. Now I'm going to pull out the system and be careful as you, you can do it. You can do it. All right. And uh, basically, uh, with the two wires are inside the pulmonary vein now. Do you see that? And over one wire, I'm going to advance a pigtail catheter, which will measure left atrial pressures throughout the case. And over the second wire, on the, over the second wire, we will attach, the, we'll go with the guide catheter. Do you understand what I'm doing? Through the same vein. Yes. What size, uh, what, what French uh, pigtail do you use? Yeah, four French. If four It's French. interesting that uh, I found, it's a good question that you asked me. If you do anything more than a four French, it bleeds around the groin. Yeah, we've so seen what, that now. Yes. So don't you know, use a uh, six French, yes. You know, Cyberland, I, I was just wondering, um, you know, that valve is a very uh, strange valve. Uh, it, although the jet yes. is A2P2, there are two areas of prolapse in the posterior leaflet. I know. Uh, do, do, you, do you foresee one clip, two clips? And, you know, do you see the stability being influenced by the prolapse on either side of the central location? So that is the biggest concern. The biggest problem is I don't mind going on both sides, but the valve area is not very big. And that's my problem. 
so that's why I'm going to go right in the middle because and of I that suppose, reason. I suppose. And uh, I'm, but I'm going to use an XTW. Right. Okay. One XTW can you hold for uh, uh, for the wires? For, yeah. Okay. Hold this wire. Again. The is going into the soft wire. Over the soft wire, I'm advancing the okay. pigtail. Can you hold it? Straight. See the. Um, okay, so this is the pigtail inside. Okay, now take this out and asterisk, attach it. Okay. Uh, yeah. He's going to attach it to the pressure. That's right. So this is going to be our pigtail catheter in the left atrium. So you see that one catheter, and the second uh, you can show uh, right. Good. And now, now I'm dilating the vein with a single uh, dilator 18 French. And the, over the other wire, this is a stiff wire, super stiff wire. We're going we're gonna to do the guide catheter over this. You see the technique? So on the, to the same vein, we have two, through actually two catheters, through the through hole. Ready to go? Check the hole for sure. So Jake is an intern, only six months, and he's already scrubbed in Tavers, Microclips, and Watchmans. And PFO. And PFO. Hmm. Cyborg, do do. Oh shit! Uh, the came out. Oh, the pigtail is now oh, in there. All right. Ah, oh. all right. We got to do this all again. Okay, give me the give me the. All right, can you give me the uh, transeptal sheet? So we're just going to go to access again, and no problem. It'll take only a couple of minutes. So the bleeding doesn't matter. Bit and I'm bleeding between a uh, pigtail and uh, no, it doesn't. Catheter. I'll show it to you. Oh. I just got the pigtail back. I don't know what happened. Um, no, we took out too much pressure. Just... No, no, no. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, it's okay. I know what happened. While we were pulling out the guide, so I'm just going back with the transeptal sheet. And I'm going to go back through the sheet, go back, put the second wire up, and it'll be okay. You see that? I'm going with the transeptal sheet in, in. I'm inside. Can you get the second wire? Please? Oh. Yeah, good. So we'll go, we'll do the same thing again. It only take a couple of minutes, just for pressure. I'm sorry for this delay. No problem, uh, Simon. Left. Huh? No problem. Okay, so that's the two wires coming out. The two wires are in. Hold pressure hard. Good. All right. So let's go over the first wire. So you know, see, this is an advantage of having a double wire. You lose access. You know, you already have access. You have a second. So I never worried about losing access because already I have two catheters across the left atrium at any point of time. So it's not that I have to go back through a different hole, nothing. This is Gabe's fault. He pulled it out. It's worse. It's worse. <laughs> no, he's, I'm just joking. It's my fault. So we're going back with the pigtail catheter. Um, very good. So, Cyber, you still routinely measure um, left atrial pressure for pigtail um, throughout the procedure. Absolutely, routinely. I don't use I don't use the guide catheter to do it because it it, it changes when you twist when you and flex the, the catheter. The curve, yeah. It damps. That's why I measure it separately. Okay, good. All right, let's go with the guide now. <clears throat> So now we're going with the guide catheter. You saw we, we redid the whole thing over again, and we only spent two, three extra minutes. That was unintentional. You could have said it, it was just a teaching point here. <laughs> okay, is that it? Just forgive it. 
All right. So I'm just going to uh, go with this. Yes. Mr. Any what size highlighter do you routinely use? 18. 18. Okay. Just one 18 trench. Pull, pull the wire back a little bit. Good. So now I'm just going to make it negative. Just keep it down. Keep it down. Okay. So I'm just going to pull the wire a little bit more. Pull the wire. All right. Can you show me short axis? Yep. Single mm -hmm. plane. So I'm just going to go across. I think the guide's already across. Yeah, you can see the zebra stripes up top. That's it. Okay, now let's get the. Okay, very good. And I don't have any Japanese fellows with me. That's the problem. <laughs> I will send you. Okay, lift it up. Just lift this up. Just lift the whole thing up. This one. Just lift it up. Right? Just lift it up. Can I just pull? Ah. Okay. All right. Is there enough guide? Yes. Okay, plenty. Okay, so now I'm going to do the standard way. Is um, as for it, Gosma, you can do it. You can see that. Do you the, see enough, tip, tip enough the guide? guide? That's tip perfect. The guide right here. Good. Yeah. You guys do that, Genko. No, yeah, kind of a double bucket. double sign there. This is the dilator the, right here. No, no, no. All right, so first let me pull the dilator in. So you can see the guide. Now pull the wire back. And oh, then we're done. Guide, guide's Actually. coming back a little bit. Is it? Yeah, there you go. Okay. No, you're Plenty okay. You're good now. Yep. Plenty of guide. That's for it. That's for it more. Good. A little bit more and then give the blood back okay so we have the guide in and now we're just going to go with the clip we we prepped one xtw can you show me a little bit short axis like at the base like so so Saib, how often do you use uh, xtw uh, for degenerative mr patients we use a lot 80 percent or 90 percent uh, it decreased the angle like 45 ish that I, I can see and flex your probe a little bit. So I can see the long axis of the guide. Kata. I want to see the guide. So, not short axis then, yeah? Yeah, it's short axis, like 45. You're not and then see flex it. it. You're, you're very retroflexed. Now, now I can see it. Actually, I can't. No, it was better before. Huh? Okay. All right, so that's better. That's okay. That's gosh, I had to advance the probe, yeah. Okay, so we now, now we're just going to pull it back. So I just need a, I just need a centimeter of guide. See that? I think that's a lot of. Uh, I'm very. I'm you can not, see how posterior he is. Yeah. yeah. So I, I I counterclockwise the guide to be the anterior. Okay. So flush it. Okay. Good. Uh, your posterior. So yeah, again. I know, I know. I'm just going to uh, counterclockwise the factor. Counterclockwise the little bit. So I'm just trying to get it more. Very quite posterior, huh? No, I'm just going to get it in, and then I'll go counterclockwise. Can you no, see no, no, you're aiming right, but yeah, too posterior. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now I'm just okay. It thank you. Okay, so I'm just going <clears> to <throat> get the guide in. I think we are quite a lot deep inside. And this is the XTW, right? XTW, yes. Hey, I was wondering about it. Before you have XTW, right? Yeah. Yes, we do. Okay, hey, before, out. Before, can I just ask a quick question of uh, for for sure, sure, sure. Know, James? Uh, um, you know, can you tell anything about leaflet quality on Echo on based on those images? Uh, 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 James. Or or Cyber or Takashi or I don't know. Or do you? No, we are concerned about the leaflets. Well, not that, we but are. the quality. I mean, like whether you will tear. I mean, are we able to tell? I'm not all? worried about tear. I'm more worried about stenosis. Right. Yeah. Okay. They, they seem on the second side. You know. So. Well, Sebo, I have a question. Uh, and uh, uh, this is James. Uh, just questions. Uh, this is the area is the borderline, slightly you know, more than four. Yes. And uh, you expect it will be a possible two clip based on this jet and uh, two prolapse in the pre wide And uh, in this kind of situation, you, uh, you think is a, is a XTW is better or use a narrow one is better? 
given this small value. No, we, we, were deb- we agree with your point, sir. Uh, and I was thinking about doing an XT, but we thought the jet is so wide. If we land up with a big jet, we'll have to do two clips. So we're trying to see if we can get away with just one clip. Right. That's if why we, we decided. If we just in case near two, do you think it will be a issue with the stenosis if we're two? Uh, I, I agree with you, but we found that, uh, I mean, I agree with you. If it doesn't work, we, we can always change it. Right. Sure. But I, but I, I, I completely agree with your point. Thanks. Okay. This is in Chris two thousand. All right. So let's get. So we have the clip in the bicable view. So let's let's get the. I can give you a. Uh, give me. So do you want to see the position? So we are now in a bi play a bi commercial LVOT view. Uh, what are you doing, Gabriel? I'm uh, I'm showing you here. Okay, so, no, yeah. put color on. Oh, okay, sorry. I just want to see. So I need to come a little bit more medial, right? Mm-hmm. You can decrease the tidal volume sure, if you sure. can. And I, I was going to go right in the middle of this jet, of the se- second jet. Okay, tidal and, volume is in. And let's see that. I think that looks good. Color you can on. move more 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 medial. More medial. Yes, please. Okay. okay. We just go a little bit more medial. How about now this one? I still I still think slightly more medial to get between these two bumps, right? So we're yeah. we're trying to get right here. Right in the middle. Okay. Yeah, so I think I need there you go. That looks pretty that good. That looks good, right? Right? Yeah. Your trajectory and AP looks good too. Yes. Do you want so to open let, the clip and check yeah. the grippers? Yeah. So we're gonna open the clip in this position. And check orientation. Almost perfect. A little clock. Yeah, a little bit clock, right? Mm-hmm. A little bit clockwise, you guys agree? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. And we can check the grippers while we still wait. You can see here. So we're going to check the grippers. Which one is posterior, which is anterior? Difficult. It's very hazy. Yeah, yeah you didn't see it, huh? No. Yeah, I was running into shadowing, so I'm pulling up a, a little bit, but okay. maybe not. Huh? No, we, we can no, do let's it. do bicom LV. Yes, yep. Yeah. Sometimes you can see it in that pretty clearly there. We obviously did not. Yeah. Okay, go ahead and check your grippers. Okay, so let's check the grippers. That's anterior. That's, that's anterior to the blue. So the dot is posterior. And there's posterior. Yep. Yeah. So um, if I see the Bicom LVOT, since the orientation is okay, I think it's diving medial to la- lateral to medial, correct? Let me see if I can... Move. Advance your probe a little bit. I, yeah, d- I, think... I, just, I just did, yeah. So you mean medial dive? I think there's a medial dive, right? Yeah. So I, th- I agree with you a little bit, yeah. And I'm also going to bring it back a little bit to the center. Yeah. How about this? Yeah, you guys can see we're running so, into some shadow. So, have a video advanced uh, clip to LV with a uh, clip arm um, open or closed? No, no, closed. Closed. Put color on. I think this is a good point. I think this is a good point, right? I think so. You can see you're stopping the jets, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, we are going to close the clip. You know, since you made some changes, you want to check orientation one more time first? Sure, or? sure, sure. Yeah. We can do that. Okay. You can see he's he's very insistent on on cha- checking the uh, the yeah. orientation. It looks I think great. it looks perfect. Yeah. Right. Good. And it's just a quick check. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to close the clip to at least sixty. What do you think, Ali? Okay. Now let's look at Bicom a little bit more detail. And see where we're going. We're in the jet. Yeah, the, yeah. There's a lot of shadowing. Yes, there is. Yeah. But I think it looks good a, there. Yes, looks I good. think it's perfect. You can see those kind of the thickened parts, and I think you're right in between, which is what we wanted to do. And a little clockwise on the guide. And your AP, you're right in the middle. 
Yeah, dive in just below. Okay. And now let's open the clip. Do you want to show the audience multi view yeah. or do you uh, want to just stick with this? You can stick with this. Okay. okay. Yeah. You've got some very good images. Yeah. <laughs> but show me by whether we are in the right spot. Yeah, I'm gonna kind of manipulate my probe height here. That looks pretty good actually. Put color on? Yeah. And clockwise, counterclockwise your probe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that position, right? Yeah. Now let's go to LVOT at the 3D end face. Yeah. Because remember, we said we want to be in between the two knobs. That's right. Yeah. So, so I'm going to gain down to lose the, the leaflets and see the clip. And you can see it there. It's perfectly oriented, right? I think so, yeah. So I'm going to gain up just to confirm that we're kind of between those two posterior nubbins, and it looks like we are. Okay. Excellent. All right. You would like that view, guys? Yes. So, Sago, how, how often do you uh, check, uh, how many times do you check uh, arm orientation? One. As many in, times as I want. Oh, really? It's so important. Would you, I think, Saibo, anytime you manipulate the position of the clip and rotate yes. it at all, yes. it's, it uh, seems I like agree it, with that. Yeah. So you can see we are in good position. The only thing is the posterior leaflet huh? looks like it's caught on the shaft, correct? You see that? I don't think so. Yeah. yeah. It's just knuckled. It's just knuckled. See, there it looks free. Mm -hmm. it's over again. Yeah. Well, but that will influence the. Oh, I see. Yeah. There you go. See, that go. looks free, more free mm -hmm. there, huh? We can close the clip a little bit, and that'll help it go inside like a V. Mm -hmm. That's much better. See that? Mm -hmm. Just got to make sure. Time it right so the grippers get everything. I'm going to open the clip again to make it nice and tight. And I've dropped the grippers. Okay. And then you can do 3D end face. And you can see the grippers moving nice. up, right? Yeah. 3D end face. Sure. Very nice okay. imaging. You've got such perfect views of the grippers uh, being bounced around. Yeah. Oh, he's an excellent imager. Yeah. Oh, we love the location here, Saibo. He looks it. Yeah. It's good. Again. It's good. It's good. Good for the brand. You want to yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Right. I think the grain looks good. So let's consider closing. Tomas, do you want to come to say? Okay. Good. So you, she wants to close the clip oh, slowly. Yeah, perfect. Look at that, Saibo. It's great. Okay. No, no. First, close it to a little half degree, just to half a turn. And watch LA pressure. Can you show LA pressure? I don't need to show my hand. Let's show LA pressure. That's good. And so we'll, we'll see what happens to LA pressure. Let's keep coming now. Okay. Good. Up. I think you got all the prolapse and then lock the clip. Too. That looks really good. And then close down more. Stop. Very good. Keep going now. You see how the LA pressure is changing, guys? Oh, yeah. Keep going. Wow. Can you see the smoke in the left atrium? Mm -hmm. Okay. We can optimize and take more posterior leaflet if necessary. Yeah. So we see the LA pressure has come down dramatically. Yeah. And now let's look at the MR. So there is a lateral jet. Which we expected, but let's see how far it goes into the. Okay. What I want to do is I want to optimize this leaflet. I'm going to take more posterior in. Okay. Yeah. yeah, check a gradient. Okay, the heart rate is not much. So so, so, came in with so, base, base yes. in the so why do you want to uh, grasp posterior leaflet more? Because it's moving much or just yeah, you want to decrease? Um, I want to see if I can decrease the MR with one. Gradient one is unchanged. So you want to I mean, decrease? See this, yes, see the 3D end face? I think it's a good position. Can you see the 3D end face? Sure. 
Yeah. You like the I like the posterior leaflet. I mean, it looks nice. If you remember on the pre pre imaging, it was you know you maybe you have like two millimeters of posterior leaflet that you can grab that's prolapsing, but the rest of it was restricted. You know, at the base. We got the right in the middle of the prolapse. I think, yeah, right that? right where we wanted to address it. Yeah. Let's put color on. And there's the jet. And if you do face crop, you can kind of lose yeah, that. Yeah, you can face crop that. Yeah, so I'm coming down. And that's at the level of and the And that's very really lateral. Yeah. So we on, should... On the, uh, other, on the other side. I'm of just going to take one optimization. Part. If not, doesn't work. I'm just going to keep it. Yeah. Is that okay with you guys? Yes. Yeah. But the lateral jet is a little bit far from a creep. Right. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah, it's on the other side of that thickened portion of the yeah. posterior leaflet. Yeah. So let's let's try a little bit of because the leaflet is moving a little bit. You see that? Mm -hmm. So I actually want to open the clip. Yeah. So see, there's a before you get into that Mac. There's maybe maybe a couple so millimeters a couple you can get. Yes. Yeah. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to advance the clip a little bit. This is how you do it. You advance the clip a little bit. You clockwise. Huh? And then you pull up. And you want me to, uh, which is the pursuit? This is the blue one or the dot? So pull the dot back. Uh, this highlights the importance of making sure you check your grippers before you go. One of our checkpoints. Okay. think much we can go much more i did clockwise right i think i got more posterior didn't i potentially more yeah we'll see when you close mm -hmm. i mean the entirety of the gripper is is coming up with the okay good with the cardiac motion let's come up go to go down go down close more So the same degree of LA like pressure it. change. Yeah. I don't think there's much of a change anymore. I think we are okay with this. The question is, I think we should keep this. What do you think? Uh, LA really, pressure's come, we'll right? see color. Let's look Can at the primary veins. Yeah. So we're and just checking what, the MR to see if there's any. Yeah, just a commissural sure jet. The okay. medial jet is very small, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. And so you just tighten it up a little bit more. Good. And you could argue it doesn't even go that far yeah, into exactly. the atrium, right? And we tried to optimize and we didn't see any advantage. I actually like it. Okay. So let's look at the pulmonary veins. Yeah. Can you please show the unplanted view? But unplanted yes, I will. Yes, unplanted. yes. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, while I'm here, let me just check the pulmonary We check the vein. pulmonary vein and we'll give the unplanted view. Yeah. Uh, Gabriel, do you want me to scrub out and help you in the echo? Yes, please. Sometimes I have to scrub out and help him. <laughs> so our systolic uh, wave was uh, reversed before, and now it is upright. And that's the right upper pulmonary vein? Yeah. This is Seibel's uh, hardest thing to image, but usually it doesn't. Usually it is a to bit difficult it. to get this. <laughs> so I try to get a better view. It's, it's upright, actually. Yeah. Can you see if you can get a little better image? Yeah, sure. I, I don't, I'll have to scrub out and come out. It doesn't look nice. Actually. It doesn't look good. Yes, I know. Yeah. You'll be embarrassed. So okay, that go. looks great. Yeah, it's definitely upright. So that's upright. systolic prominent in both the veins. Yeah. You guys see that? There's no doubt we've helped her today. Yes. You know. And you see the smoke in the left atrium? Let's get, let's get, get a nice 3D. And maybe we don't have to do... Um, no, shadowing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One just second. Try, yeah. Just try it, everybody. Yeah. We, uh, after this, we're just going to deploy. So let's get a nice view. Shadowing. Still I think there. you are too yeah. high up. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes That's you good. get below it. Yeah, this is, a, that, looks, this is actually nice. Though. But you can see the shadow is casting there on the lateral part of the. There we go. That's it.
So because I went into a different area, where's my aorta? Sometimes it's easy to get lost here. I do it the standard way because now you're losing everything. Yeah, go. We just go up like what you were doing before. Yeah, it doesn't look nice. The images. Now, Gobi, let's go back. Let's do like the standard way you did. Yeah, it's okay, Michelle. Oh, I see. That's why. That's a, that's a nicer way. Yeah, that's good. Do this. Right. Explain that. That's really good. Oh, it looks beautiful. That's a really nice picture, right? Yes. And I think we've taken very nice the tissue bridge. And we there's a very nice tissue bridge, and we actually mm. on the that said I think we like this. Do you agree with yeah, but, this? Yes, but one cosine is area of a major valve. Well, the gradient mean gradient is only two, and we can mm -hmm. do uh, we can do three three. Look at that beautiful uh, imaging that is called multi project uh, MPR imaging, and he actually can show you every part like this very nicely. You can see that on the left lower column you can see the orifice right in the valve. And then you can see the, the nice tissue bridge over there. Posterior leaflet is moving a little bit up, but it's okay. Um, I'm going to deploy if that's okay with you guys. Uh, okay. Don't you don't measure uh, mean gradient again? Yes, we did. The mean gradient is two. Hmm. Oh, really? Yeah. So he's doing the planimetric area. If you want to see how he's doing it. We got gradient two, right? Yes, a gradient of two. Yeah. We can check one more time if you want. I think after we grasped the second time, we didn't check again. Correct, so, we didn't. Yeah. But so after the second time we grasped, we didn't. I would just do, do a, okay, just do a value if you can. Two point eight six. That sounds a bit too much. Yeah. Doesn't make sense. That's the that's the medial part. Remember, it's rotated on this view. So let's look at this. Let me color jet on the medial side because we should move. I don't think we should move the clip to medial, right? And then this is the lateral orifice, which we expect to be smaller. Okay, one point four. All right, so, so pretty, uh, pretty unchanged. Okay, so let's yeah. look at the color again and. See I'm going to check the gradients. Like yeah, okay. yeah, one point nine two. You know, sometimes um, it, 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 this looks very good, actually. Um, uh, I, I would be very happy with this result because um, you have got um, early pressure improvement, pulmonary vein flow improvement, and color as you know doesn't reach that far back. Um, but you know maybe you can reassess once you deploy the clip. But this looks really good. Agreed. Yeah. Yes, KK, I agree with you. I don't want to do something crazy and stop get a good. We, this is a millimeter, two millimeters mercury. Two. Great. So let's look at the color. Should we look at the color at once and for sure. I thought my 3D looked like the color is coming primarily from the lateral side. Yeah, see that there's only a tiny medial jet and that's a little bit far commercial jet. So I'm going to leave this. Yeah, and we had graded as a grade two, yeah. right? Where we started four plus, okay. this is two plus now. I think it's less than that, but anyway, so let's, let's, <laughs> let's deploy this. Yeah. Um, okay, so, so we're going to an ARIO portal view. You should see the clips. Um, I'm just trying to get a little bit of more tissue, but we got a lot of tissue in this case. Okay, so, all right, so let's go. Start to open this. Okay, go. Okay. Uh, Remember, do you predict that uh, the, the lateral yeah. MR would That's increase nice. or decrease after deploying the clip? I don't think it'll get worse. Yeah. You first open it up to check with the. Let me see. So I'm opening the uh, thing to neutral and there's no, it's not opening at all. So I'm going on the positive side of, uh, this is neutral and this is positive side of neutral. Now you can take this off. You can see on the bottom left, the, the bow tie, both leaflets coming in nicely. So it's, it's very interesting to see how we prevented the knuckling 
by going v, v. Okay. Spread it out. Okay, cool. Yes. Spread it out, please. One. The other one, the other, the other one. Okay. Then pull the other one, pull the other one. Okay. All right. So we are out now with the first. Yeah. I have a superstition of closing the clip more again. I really can't close the clip anymore. I think, I think there's a lot of tissue. A lot of tissue in there. Mm -hmm. And then we just come back to neutral. Okay. So there's no movement at all. I think so. Okay. Pull out. Out. Five times this. And now take the groove up eight times. Three. Okay, pull it back. Okay, good. Pull it but yep. I think we're going to deploy the clip. Can you show, show me how much of guide we have? Okay, good. Can I get the fluid thing? I think so, yeah. And this one. Mm -hmm. It looks really there stable. Huh? Guide's okay. okay. Good. All right, so we just watched him bring out the clip delivery system, make sure the guide is in the same spot. It is good. And then we can evaluate what's going on with the valve. Okay, that's good. Actually, the lateral flail is really taken care of. And you can see the lateral jet has become smaller. Yes. Right? Yeah. The medial jet was a little bit more. There's yeah. a bit of a lateral prolapse. So the question is, it's, it's, it almost looked like when it was just as it was deployed, the, the posterior leaflet worked out a little bit. Yeah. And now you have that jet coming kind of behind there. So let's see whether we should put another clip medially or not. If there's any residual prolapse, we should put one. See, there's a little flake uh, come closer. Can we look at 3D? 3D, yes. Let's look at 3D. So he, Seibel's looking right there, right next to the clip and seeing yeah. uh, a little bit of posterior. Prolapse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you want to? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we got a very nice tissue bridge. But we have a receipt. Actually, laterally, it looks very nice to me. Right? Now let's put some color on. See, that's a commissural jet. Yeah, yeah. so there's a comment. Yeah. Yeah. You see, the commissural jet we should not touch. You yeah. see that? Yeah, but there is and this jet. There's a tiny here. jet there. The question is the only it, reason to do it would be for stability, not because you yeah. want to reduce the MR that much, really. Right? So let's see. Then maybe we'll have to do an NT. If the gradient is not so bad. My, my orifice said, you see the whole valve looks very rigid to me. It doesn't look very no. big. No. Mm -hmm. We got a strong bridge. Would, yeah, would your, it might be a good reason to stop. You know? Yeah, yeah would, your, that... would your LA pressure and your pulmonary vein, you know, any changes? If, anyway, otherwise, mm -hmm. it looks pretty good, you know. Your, your, what's the left atrial pressure like? Is it still, the, still pretty good? 12. Yeah. 12, yeah, still pretty good. And the clip looks stable, actually. There's a little bit of rocking that we didn't see before, but, but I think there's a lot of leaflets still in there. Oh, there's plenty of leaflets. Yeah. I don't. I think maybe there's a good stopping point. I could check the pulmonary veins now. So you want to see immediately whether there's space for me to put a clip, or I don't want to unnecessarily cause stenosis? What's, what's the reason you would do it, Cybel? 
just see that color that MR looks a little bit more than I wanted. Let's do that. There's a, yeah, I mean, there certainly is a little bit of a prolapsing segment there, but. I think this pressure is a little bit higher for the two than normal. 137, yeah. yeah. That's a commissure jet. We shouldn't bother about the lateral side. The medial side. It doesn't go very far into the atrium. I'm not capturing it, but. Yeah. No, it joins with that other one and then stops, you know, and it's just above the valve. I don't yeah. think it's, I wouldn't even, yeah, it's not okay. that much. And go more Latin, go more medial. More medial? Yeah. With, uh, yeah. The, the, the color explaining? Uh-huh. You're there. There's a bit of a There prolapse. is a piece of there, but I mean, but very small. You think you should sneak in an entry? I don't think so. So it's very tiny jet. Yeah. yeah, I don't think so. Either. All right, let's look at the palmy veins. This is one of those things that it's, if the clip is stable, right? This is someone you could always bring back if you needed yeah, to, yeah. right? Absolutely. What'd you say? Uh, pulmonary veins? Yeah. yeah. So that's completely normal. Yeah. And even more upright than yep. here. Yeah. And the blood pressure is 137 by 67. And normal on this side too. Yeah. And a gradient. Let's, let's do a gradient. So we have all the information we need to make our decision. The tiny area of prolapse which I would have loved to. No, it's not moving. It's just that there's a small residual prolapse on one side. The gradient might go up even when he wakes up because it's two now, you see? And then if it gets worse with the gradient and the heart rate's only, how much? 45. 45. So in 45, we're getting two. two. I think if we go, if we go a higher heart rate, the gradient will be higher. So I think we should stop. You agree with that? Yes. Uh, hey, guys. I agree. Yes. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, you have a good uh, hemodynamic uh, improvement, mm. and um, given the the size of the valve, I I mean, you know, the it's it seems uh, wiser just to take this and uh, you know not not yeah. push the luck. Exactly. I agree. Let's get the last three D picture before he takes it out. Nice. It, this is exactly where we wanted the clip to be. In I think it's perfect. Yeah. Right. Okay. And we have a good tissue bridge. There's no doubt. So let's pull this out. And we're just putting the clip out and we're just going to go um, single per close. We're going to pull the left atrial pressure out. Finally. Yes. And the guide's out? Yep. Guide's out. Everything's out. So we will check just to see the left to right AST we typically see, make sure that's not bidirectional. So we use it, we only use single per close. We don't use two double per close. We think in the vein, all you need is a single per close. And if we have to do a figure of eight stitch, we do an additional figure of eight stitch. And this is one single per close. You can show the groin and there's hardly any bleeding. Side so where you see the left to right AST here, that's okay. Yep. So, Saibo, do you give up protamine? Uh, sometimes. It's not a big thing. What is the ACT? What was the ACT? 600. 600? No. <laughs> no. 237. 237. <laughs> the ACT was 237. I think I'll put a figure of eight stitch on the drawing. Interesting case, huh? Yes, fantastic case, Saibo. Very nicely done. And, mm. and under time. We couldn't have timed that better, huh? You know, and, and, and you, you guys already, you know, expected this, right? I mean, the, the location is exactly where you want to be. Um, the, the residual prolapse on, on, on the sites are anticipated. And I think here the physiologic uh, and hemodynamic improvement is, is, uh, is the key reason why you don't really need to go intervene further. And the stability of the valve doesn't look too bad. I mean, it's rocking a little bit, just, but just a little bit. I, I would, I, I'm very happy with this result, I would say. Yeah, yeah, and then also remember we opened the clip and we got 
we took some more posterior leaflet and so we know that we we have we have enough posterior leaflet of course we have a lot of anterior leaflet too so i'm just doing a figure of eight stitch and uh, just to stabilize it i don't want to be called in the night by the nurses that he's oozing so that's the reason why i do the figure of eight stitch so sir when does this patient discharge home tomorrow tomorrow morning tomorrow morning so what time is it is it now in is it area? five in the six it's, in the evening six o'clock six oh nine six p.m yeah mm -hmm. so she'll probably go around nine o'clock ten o'clock and the only rate limiting step is that the echo echo sonographer gets delayed in doing a case but as soon as the sonographer is done with the echo is out so if it's done at nine she'll go at nine thirty then 10 10 30 so she won't stay more longer i mean we realistically can send patients home the same day you know it's single venous stick nothing else we have no other stick no arterial line no other venous line nothing mm -hmm. Is the patient on anticoagulation? Uh, you know, is, no, right? Uh, no, no. She's not AFib, yeah? Okay. No, no, she's sinus rhythm. Seibel, does your management change if it's degenerative versus functional? No, uh, no, no. They go the patients the do morning. the same? Yeah. They go home the next morning. If they walk yeah. into the hospital, they walk out of the hospital. Yeah. No pericardial effusion. Uh, should we dis do some discussion now or should we do it after we finish? Because we are finished over here. You're finished. Um, I want to uh, first acknowledge everybody in the room again. Jose, thank you very much. Ali, thank you very much. Jake, Asma, thank you very much. Welcome. Asma's in good form. Gabe, Gabe's in a bad mood. He wants to go for a drink. <laughs> He's not happy here. He only works on Saturdays because that's double time. That's right. Doesn't call. Mike, thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks for everything. Piero, thank you. And of course, Andrew, thank you for being yeah, here. Yeah, no problem. Dr. Andrew Carl. was in, uh, not awake. He was uh, very busy, but he still came for the case. <laughs> Do you have any other questions to ask? Others, uh, on behalf of Tom and everybody else, Enbar, we're going to say thank you. But should we have the discussion? I can go and have the discussion with my microphone on. Let them, let them get the patient on the table. Is that okay? Okay. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. I want to also thank Eddie, Eddie, Chris, and Jeff for the transmission. Vas, you've been there for 10 years with me. Thank you very much for everything. Thank you, Saibo. Very, very nice live case. Yes. Thank you, guys. So, uh, we, should we have the discussion of the camera over here? I can do it on the side. Sure. Yeah, you want, Saibo. Huh? And Inbar, thank you for your sh your. Sheila, did you hear the case? I'm, I'm just saying. My sister was seeing the case uh, remotely, and I hope he's she's happy with the case. I don't know where she have. No, she said uh, thank you with chat. <laughs> she did say thank yeah, you. Yeah, she did. She did I think Shayra is your sister, right? Yes. So let's let's discuss some things now while we're on. Yeah. So I think the first thing we should discuss is the transeptal puncture, where we do and what sort of materials we use for transeptals. So do you change uh, location of transeptal puncture according to uh, jet? The location of etiology of BMR? Yes, we do. I mean, if it's if you're on the medial side, then we try to do more medial. Uh, sorry, more uh, more. Uh, we try to get as much height, hmm. like say 4.5. You saw in this case, we were quite posterior, and still the height was just enough. So you see, when you're prolapsing case and medial cases, we want a height around 4.5 to 5. Hmm. If you're lateral, it's okay to be just four centimeters. So, Saibo, in Asian country, we cannot get uh, enough height. Most of the case, it's yeah, I know it's under four. How about KK? You know, yeah, the the height is uh, an an issue, but uh, most times with the new device, it's okay. But we need to make sure that we are posterior enough to get enough height. Otherwise, we struggle when we pull up, especially for degenerative cases. But 
you know, I, I think with the new uh, G4 system is less of a problem. Um, yeah, so so I think that's a that's a good point. And as you pointed out, if it's a very uh, medial uh, jet, then we do have to get enough height. Uh, yeah. So you can do the advanced maneuvers like clocking the guide using the A knob. I have I use some of those things. Sometimes when we see, I mean, I see a very small rift atrium, I steering it down with a uh, uh, under straddle. With a what? With under straddle. Oh, uh, without the straddle, yeah, oh. yeah. But but usually, but after after a while, it should be uh, once you once you yes. once you clear the ridge and whatnot, it's not too bad usually. Mm. So in this case, cyber, this is P2 prolapse, so you use uh, XTW, but when you uh, treat a non-central region, like a commercial region, white A1, P1, A3, P2, do you use XT or XTW or just standard NT or NTW? I, I do, the, those I do standard NT or XT. So do, you don't use wide, wide arm, right? No, no, I don't like to use wide arm, uh, no. But you use a long arm, XT. No, it depends. If it if there's if the if it's a big flail and the posterior leaflet is long in the P3, then I use an XT. Otherwise, I use NT sometimes. Uh, I what, what, a, what about Doyun? I mean, uh, in Korea, I mean, you, you have G4 now, right? Yeah, yeah. Now we have G4. Yeah. So do you usually like to use the? What's your you know for most of your cases are they usually the Ws or the uh, the regulars? Most cases are always the W after G4. So with XTW oh, and XTW, yeah. so do you use XTW for both functional or degenerative MR? Oh uh, yeah, that that was the XTW is the most used. I think that the, the web size is maybe a little bit bigger than in Korea compared with the Japanese cases. Oh um, uh, yeah, I I ours is um very uh, case dependent. We we are very fearful of the XT system. Uh, you know, a good number of our leaflet tears are with the XT system. Even though we have a good result, you know, they tear after a few days. So we recently had a very nice result on a case that we use XTW and, you know, after one month, the, the leaflet tore. So I, I'm just a bit worried. Uh, I'm not sure whether it's the anatomy or the leaflet quality, but... Um, so, so most of the time it's NTW for us, unless the anatomy calls for XT. So, yeah. Do you do you have any uh, experience about over tier of leaf rate with XTW or XT? Oh yes, I I expect one case of the tear with the XTW oh, yeah. in some functional MI case, but and the patient was treated with such color, hmm. and uh, because it was because of the, the abnormal axis and angle during the procedure. I see. So Saibo, yes. Saibo, today's yes. case is very yes. complex. This patient yes. had two jets, right? One big jet and one small jet. Do you measure a uh, uh, ERO of each jet before procedure and the plan strategy? We don't go that detailed, but we, we just qualitatively appear and look at, seem like what is the larger jet by looking at the just uh, semi quantitatively at the ERO. And if you look, the jet is wider, we go for this one. Like this one, if you noticed, the lateral jet was not coming actually from the prolapse, it was actually coming near the commissure. And if you saw after the results, well, we really didn't have any lateral prolapse. We have a residual medial prolapse, but nothing less lateral. And the jet that you're seeing laterally is coming from the commissure. And that you can't fix. Simon, I, I used to put in a left atrial pressure monitor, you know, um, but we, even with a four French, they tend to ooze. Maybe it's the, yeah, you know, some of the thin Asian patients that we have, but I, I stopped doing that. You know, for me, the pulmonary vein flow is a, is a pretty good um, Very good sign, pressure. yes. Yeah. Yes. I agree with you. The pulmonary vein flow, the reason why I also use LA pressure is in functional MR patients. Sometimes in functional MR patients, if the LA pressure doesn't drop or the V wave doesn't come down, then I wonder what, what am I doing? In some cases, I found the MR is borderline, moderate to severe, and then I do a great clip and then I find that the LA pressure goes up. And I said, this is not going to help the patient. So we should instead do not. So that's why I measure LA pressures. Like today's case, 
you saw the V-Way was coming down with us grasping. I didn't even need to see color. I knew that I had done a good result. So do you, uh, KK, do you have any questions? Uh, no, I, I think this is a great case. Um, you know, I, I, I'm actually, um, I must say, when I first saw the valve, I thought we would go after the big, the two prolapses on each side of the central, but I think the the echo showed very nicely that the jet is from the you know A two P two segment. So grasping it um, was able to reduce the MR and stabilize with the W system. Um, I would say that uh, I may have gone for two uh, uh, XTRs or NTRs, but I'm not sure whether that would have got, given us a better result. I mean, I, I don't know whether any one of you would have considered that strategy too. NTRs, uh, you know, uh, or XTRs instead of uh, one N, uh, XTW. I, I think uh, James had mentioned that also as one possibility at the beginning, but I, I, I was contemplating that as a strategy. I mean, Takashi or Doyun or... You can take it out. Would you all consider that? Take an XTW, you're not exhibiting it? Sorry, KK. Oh, no, I, I was saying, would you all consider having two, uh, using two NT clips uh, over the two collapses rather than one XTW? Uh, I usually choose a one XTW uh, because it's very simple, right? Yeah. It's just that because the prolapse, usually we go after the prolapse, uh, but in this case, the prolapse was not where the big problem was. It, it was the middle between the two prolapses that the, the MR was. So in this case, the prolapse was not at the same location. And it seems to me that uh, that could be another strategy. I, I just wasn't sure whether or not there would be another possible uh, strategy. I think in this kind of case, it's very hard to tell you. Almost have to do it and see what happens. So. I see. So, and Saibo, are you sleeping? Saibo. Yeah. <laughs> Saibo. Yes. Uh, I'm listening so, to everything. So, so, sometimes we see a uh, uh, residual billowing without a significant jet, right? Like this case. Do you put uh, additional creep? For durability of MR or stability of Sometimes I do. Sometimes I do. And you were in one of my cases long time ago. Remember when there was a late leaflet detachment? But I think in this case, I, I think I had a lot of tissue. Also, I'm a little bit uh, worried about the orifice in this valve. And so tomorrow morning, if the gradient is four or five, then I know I couldn't have put another clip. But if it's two and if there's a residual jet, I can always bring her back and put another clip laterally. Mm -hmm. I see. So, Saibo, thank you, Saibo and Asuma, thank you very much for a very nice uh, live transmission. So, Dr. James, could you close this live session? Okay. Is there any more James, questions? Do you have any questions to me, James? Uh, I just said, uh, no, I, I'm wondering whether you say you said that uh, first one, because it's a, the prolapse seems like a as a two separate prolapse uh, seems like so that's why I mentioned that whether you said two small XT. narrow one on the both side or rather than one in the middle because uh, but uh, you know I think as a result is a, is a great I think the, the residual prolapse is a pretty pretty small uh, I, I totally agree I don't think we will put another clip there because uh, the area is relatively small if the the, yeah. the much valve area is bigger I would say put another Another clip adjacent to that, I think, can fix the prolapse. So, uh, the, yeah. I totally agree. The commercial ones, uh, I don't think it's a, it's a, it needed to be treated because that will be yeah. cause more trouble rather than the yes. than benefit. Yes. yes. So I, think, I think all of that excellent, excellent thought. I think a great demonstration is, is not very really straightforward a case. So the only things I have questions about, I sort of was discussion about the the patient, the seventy seven years old, but you know, there's no other significant comorbidity. Uh, what do everybody think about the, about the, the different approach in, in terms of surgery or this kind of thing? Any, what's, uh, what's the current, uh, like, uh, 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 how to say, decision-making at the youth center for this kind of patient? It's more like a per patient preference? No, or? no, this is a very, very good question. Actually, if you're aware, there's a new trial going on in, in the U.S. called the Repair MR. Right. And there's also another study called Primary MR, which is randomizing intermediate risk patients to mitroclip versus surgical repair. 
because we you're absolutely right the mitogrip has been approved only for high risk patients right mm -hmm. for low risk we think surgery but the intermediate risk patients we still think there's there could be a role because the morbidity associated with procedure is so low so the the indication of the in the trial is patient above 75 even with no risk factors anyone above 75 and not high risk can get randomized to clip or surgical repair and if he's less than 75 the sts score has to be one one to two and he gets so, randomized to surgery with this clip so yes. put a healthy patient what's happened i say put a healthy patient less than one percent that will be a pretty healthy patient right very low risk patient no low risk patients we're not going to do All right we only will do intermediate risk patients I see. So 75 and above, it doesn't matter what the STS score or less than 75, the STS, or they have to have some comorbidities, which would consider them to be moderate risk for surgery. And we're randomizing them to clip versus surgery, surgical repair. And this is a very controversial trial going on. And uh, the follow-up is going to be for 10 years. Excellent. Looking forward as a, as a result. Okay. Okay. So I think that, uh, a great demonstration. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Sebo, for your excellent demonstration and uh, for your, uh, you know, the whole team. Uh, I, I can see that your team is uh, ex so experienced and, and work uh, together so well. And the echo, the imaging is excellent. You know. Uh, yes. So, uh, we, we, we are we are lucky to have very good uh, cardiac anesthesia who can do imaging so well. Yeah, the it great, makes it very uh, relaxed. We only have a two person procedure. He is there. He does the anesthesia. He does the echo. No extra great. person. Yeah, Sam. Thanks again for for the excellent demonstration and uh, you know particularly this you. kind of challenge case. And also thanks to to the other panelists uh, for for you you know uh, excellent questions and uh, participate. And uh, uh, I think uh, uh, we are probably will close this session. And thanks again uh, to everybody. Kamza Hamida. Thank you. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye bye.